If you are new to my channel, hello. I hope you enjoy your stay. This video is going to be solely for those that are new to the channel, but really, specifically, especially, expeditiously going to be for the news that are just for the news that has just surfaced publicly online that I need to talk about. I need to get a lot off my chest. I need to clear a lot of things up. <clears throat> okay. Konami Digital Entertainment is the name that Konami got after they absorbed Hudson Soft in 2012 and all their properties, including Bloody Roar, Bomberman, Bonk, etc. That is the name they got in 2012 after absorbing Hudson Soft. They didn't kill Hudson. Hudson was dying. They were about to go defunct or bankrupt, I guess. So Konami stepped in since they were already their parent company at one point in the early 2000s and strengthened Hudson Soft, essentially. That's what happened, okay? When it comes to the Bloody Roar games, aiding and Hudson Soft back then developed the Bloody Roar games tag team together. It wasn't just aiding, it wasn't just Hudson. Hudson owned it, they produced it, but aiding also developed it along with Hudson. If a new Bloody Roar were to happen hypothetically, it would be developed by aiding and Konami Digital Entertainment because aiding is independent and Konami outsourced their games to different developers and, a and aiding has on their website that they work for Nintendo, Capcom, Takara, or Takara, however you pronounce it, and Konami Digital Entertainment. The link to Aiding's website, if you scroll down, you will see Konami Digital Entertainment there. They can still work for Konami now. So the reason why I'm mentioning that is because people are so scared that Bloody Roar would be solely developed by Konami when it wouldn't because it is not an in-house Konami property. That is not going to happen. Aiding still exists. They are not defunct. They were just hiring for the entirety of 2019. Go on their Twitter. They have confirmed that they have met the requirement for the applications or whatever, and all they need is graphic designers. The link to that will be in the description. Now, now that that's out the way, let's talk about the Bloody Roar trademark info or whatever. So, as we all know, it's been certified. However, there is a very particular and in, uh, influential figure within the fighting game community that has discussed the topic at hand. Within that video, which was really just a stream and it was a highlight that was put up on his YouTube channel, my Twitter was shown talking about the info that was just put out. Now, Max doesn't really know who I am. It's understandable. However, I do wish that he digged a little more into my YouTube or whatever. I'm not asking for credit. I mean, I am, but like not on some entitled angry type shit because I really had to sit back and just try to assess the situation at hand. Because first of all, that thumbnail that I put on Twitter, the, 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 the picture of Yugo in front of the Konami logo, I had that thumbnail made for months because I was waiting for October 27th to happen. I was waiting for the day for the Bloody Roar trademark to get certified officially by Konami Digital Entertainment. I was talking to Casey Mangelo, a voiceover artist within the industry. I was chilling with them. And I went on the trademark page, the, the, the government website, and I saw that the trademark got certified. I lost my mind. I put on my hoodie, my bandana, did the video as you saw. So that's what happened that day. Okay. I have been looking and investigating into the Bloody Roar trademark stuff since 2019. August 25th, 2019 was when I did that video talking about Bloody Roar will return and here's why. And it's a video of me basically going to the the Canadian government website and finding out that in 2018 of September, just what? Uh, a month and two days or two months and two days or something like that after my Bloody Roar video with my friend Voice Legend and Etchy, they did something with the trademark. Hudson Soft did something with uh, Bloody Roar, which was kind of weird because, you know, they they don't exist as their own company, but it was official documentation or whatever. So, fact of the matter is, I did, I did that video uh, in August. However, rewind back. We're, we're gonna rewind back time some, and we're gonna talk about the Bloody Roar revival plan video because I feel like that video is very important when it comes to this stuff. Now, that video was done March twenty third, twenty nineteen. In that video, at the end, if you do not know, I called Konami. I called their headquarters. I called the wrong division of Konami at first. The woman told me the correct division to call regarding their video games. I got the number. I called it. Did it in the video. In that video, I talked about Bloody Roar. Congratulated them on their 50th anniversary because it's their 50th anniversary. And I told them to see that video, to watch that video if they could. On March 23rd, 2019, that's when the video will be premiering or that's when it will be up in general. So that's what I did. 
So I was done with that video. That video is at almost that video is at a hundred and two thousand views right now, and that video was done a year ago. Fast forward to twenty twenty. As I mentioned, the Bloody Roar Revival Plan video was done March twenty third, twenty nineteen. Fast forward a year later, an exact approximate year later, the Bloody Roar trademark, the newly filed Bloody Roar trademark, has been licensed or filed rather by Konami Digital Entertainment, March 23rd, 2020. That revival plan video was legitimately a year before, March 23rd, 2019. Another thing I'm gonna add is that my friend Jose sent the video as well as the Bloody Roar petition to a European PR manager of Konami and that PR manager passed that video and a petition to his colleagues in Japan. If you look at the Bloody Roar trademark, it is shown that Konami Digital Entertainment in Japan was what filed the newly licensed Bloody Roar trademark. So it's no coincidence that this is happening. The Konami senior brand manager, Ben, has stated to Hip Hop Gamer publicly in a live stream that they have not forgotten about Konami and Hudson Soft properties. And he mentioned Suikoden and Bloody Roar right out of his mouth. They see what the fans do. They pass what they think is best based on the fans' feedback on how they should handle a series or a game or whatever. They pass it on to Konami. And then it goes to the developers. And then they try to brainstorm. The link to that will be in the description as well. That also supports the revival plan most likely being seen by Konami, in my opinion, based on all that information alone. Also, Konami did bring back Hudson Games on the Turbo Graphic 16 Mini uh, at E3 2019 last year. They did reveal that, and they did revive the uh, Suikoden website uh, for the games. I have been talking about the Bloody Roar trademark information for basically a year, if you include the Canadian government website. The U.S. website that this newly surfaced info was found on, I've been talking. I've been talking about this for six months. When it's you know, when it's appropriate, when an update happens. Even if Konami Digital Entertainment was involved with this hypothetical new Bloody Roar games development, that's to be expected because they absorbed Hudson Soft back in 2012, which means that the remaining Hudson staff from years ago could still be there. I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying that's realistic. They could still be there for their Hudson game. You know, if you own Bloody Roar, and that was primarily a Hudson Soft title, they would have to do a lot of homework, or they could just have the people that worked on Bloody Roar at Konami Digital Entertainment now. The trademark was registered in Class 9. It was filed for Class 9. Class 9 is not for Pachinkos. Class 9 is not for mobile games. Class 9 is for video game consoles. CD-ROMs and all that jazz. So, a Bloody Roar Pachinko is not happening. A Bloody Roar mobile game, gotcha game, is not happening. So, people don't need to worry about that. And as I think I mentioned before earlier in the video, an in-house Konami-only developed Bloody Roar game is not happening. Since aiding or not defunct. So, I think that's all I wanted to say. Um... Shout out to the people that commented about me on Maximilian's video. I do wish that he didn't use part of my thumbnail and slap his face on it and the logo on it and stuff. I know a snag to thumbnail is a snag to thumbnail, but I can't contact him. I can't DM him. I can only comment, but I'll get overlooked like I did when this information surfaced regarding the trademark. So that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to clear a lot of air and make something clear because... I've done a lot for the Bloody Roar community. I've done a lot when it comes to the Bloody Roar series. And this series means a lot to me and has done a lot for me. It has significantly changed my life. Like, for the better, essentially. You know, so I just wanted to make that clear. Um, I hope you guys have yourselves a good one. I just wanted to make this video because I felt as though it was important. This is not to cause a battle or war between me and Max or anything. It's just me talking about everything. That's it. Not ranting. Nothing. See you guys later. Have yourselves a good one. Be safe. Let's hope for Bloody Roar to appear at the Game Awards or early 2021, if not this year. Oh, right. The reason why I mentioned that 
Bloody Roar might appear at the Game Awards is because Konami followed the Game Awards on Twitter January 11th of this year. So, yeah. I think that's interesting. But, yeah. I'll see y'all later. Have yourselves a good one. I'll catch y'all on the next upload whenever. If ever, be on the lookout for the announcement slash reveal thing that I have coming November 8th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. It's going to be a special day. It's going to be a big day for me. And I hope you guys enjoy what I have to put out. Peace.